to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Leslie Andrews, and I'm a consultant at Pragmatic Works, and I'm here to talk about Azure Databricks. Today, I'm going to walk you through getting started with Databricks by creating your own Databricks service and cluster. Before we get started, FYI, you have to have an Azure pay-as-you-go account. Databricks is not available in the free subscription. However, there is a free 14-day premium trial for Azure Databricks. To begin, we're going to sign into the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. Once you get logged into the portal, we're going to select the plus to create a new resource. You can search for Databricks or go to the analytics link, find it in the list and select it. The new Databricks service page opens. You'll select or create a new resource and enter in the workspace name for your Databricks service. Select the location and the pricing tier. I'm going to use the premium 14 day trial. We'll review and create. Once it has been validated, we'll push the create button and it will deploy our Databricks service. Once the deployment is complete, we can select the Go to Resource button, which will allow us to launch a Databricks workspace. Databricks uses Azure Active Directory for authentication, and once you are signed in and the Databricks workspace opens, the first thing you have to do is create a cluster. Nothing can happen in Databricks without one. To open the new cluster dialog, you can select the new cluster on the launch page or select the cluster icon in the tray, which opens the cluster manager page, and then select create cluster. After entering a cluster name, select the cluster mode. High concurrency is optimized for concurrent workloads in SQL, Python, and R, but does not support Scala. Standard mode, which is recommended for single user clusters, supports all the languages. We're going to stick with standard mode. There is no pool, which is an additional research that allows the cluster to start quickly. And we're going to select our Databricks runtime version. This lists all of the currently supported versions and the beta versions available. There are also two machine learning variants available, the standard machine learning and graphical processing unit machine learning. I'm going to select the newest non-beta version. The autopilot options include the enable auto scaling, which toggles between a variable or static number of workers. The auto terminate time box shuts the cluster down after the specified time period has elapsed with no jobs running. Here's where we're going to select the types of workers for our cluster. You can either provide a fixed number of workers or a minimum and maximum, depending on if you enabled auto scaling. If you provide a fixed size cluster, Azure Databricks will always use that many workers. If you provide a range for the number of workers, Databricks picks the appropriate number of workers required for the job. The system does some real-time validation of processing capabilities, and this warning is letting me know this account doesn't have enough CPUs for the level of workers selected. If I lower the max number of workers, the warning disappears. Next, we pick what kind of workers to use. The bigger and beefier, the faster and more expensive. There are several different types of workers. We're going to select a lightweight general purpose worker with a DBU, Databricks unit, of 0.75, which is the unit of processing capability per hour and prices range from $0.07 cents per DBU to $0.55. Cents. We are going to use the same driver type as the worker, but we could, if we wanted to, have a beefier driver. The driver node runs the main functions and executes the parallel operations on the worker nodes. Once we've filled out all of our information, we select the Create Cluster button. And now we have a Databricks workspace with a running cluster that we can use to start in our own Databricks notebook development. If you want to discuss Databricks or have a question on Azure or Power Platform, 
Click the link below for more information, call or email, and we will be happy to discuss it further with you.